Everyone, time now to do some business. My name is Sandra Essenam Afeno, and there's still some excitement in the air following the reopening of the Boise Mines. And tonight, the Ghana Chamber of Mines says the nation stands to benefit an estimated $5.3 billion for the entire lifespan of Anglo Gula Shanti Mines. These include payments of royalties, corporate tax, among others. In an exclusive interview with Joy Business Chief Executive of the Chamber, Suleiman Kuni described the coming back of Anglo Gula Shanti as an opportunity to boost the country's economy as well as investor confidence. Shanti Obwasi Mine was placed on limited operations towards the end of 2014 and has been under care and maintenance since 2016 pending commencement of the mine's redevelopment project. In June 2018, Parliament ratified AGA's agreement with government to redevelop the Obwasi Mine into a profitable business once again. According to the Chamber of Mines, the benefits to be accrued from the economy include taxes and royalties as well as reviving the livelihoods of the indigents. And you will also talk about the fiscal benefits which will come to the state. I think the, the president mentioned them, um, what the expectations of this government were. Of course, they've run all the numbers, which is positive, is good. But for us, <laughs> the exciting bit has to do with the unseen benefit, normally in the, in the supply chain, how the communities will benefit, how individuals within the community and outside the community who offer goods and services to this company and how they would also benefit. I think it's quite tremendous. And it's welcome news for, for the Chamber of Mines, for industry. I think the global mining industry would be quite excited because the Ashanti brand has actually come back. CEO of the Chamber of Mines, Suleiman Ukone, explains the return of a to the mining industry is a big deal. I talk about branding. And Ghana's brand when it comes to mining, you can't wish Obwase away. When you go into the international area and when you're talking about mining, Obwase is a big brand. And that's why for me, Obwase coming back puts Ghana right back is it on in the. In terms of numbers or the. It's, it's the history. It's the history. And it's the contribution that his, Obwase has made over the years to our economy. Obwase, and, and um, if you consider people who have worked at Obwase, and the impact they have made in the industry in Ghana and elsewhere within the industry globally, you'll be amazed. AGA Obwase is expected to pour out its first gold by the end of the year. Meanwhile, the chamber has expressed confidence in the state security agencies in protecting the Obwase concession. This follows an attack on the mines by some galaxy operators some years back. It's welcome news as well, and we all know what it went through. And especially Anglo Gulashan to Abwasi with illegal miners and all of that. We don't want to recount the, the sad story of what we, we actually went through as an industry. But the good thing is that we have Abwasi back and the president has given his commitment. I know that there is a, an agreement, a security agreement between the mine and the company as a, as a condition for the mine to actually um, restart. It's our belief that government will honor its side of the bargain. Uh, commits resources to the ground to make sure that we have security. Companies generally want that conducive environment, they want that peace of mind to be able to do their work. And generally, governments would have to provide that, you know, enabling environment, uh, not just the uh, economic fundamentals, but peace and security. I think it's critical. Um, we say in the mining industry that um, security is a major critical success factor. And therefore, for, for, for the two parties to agree to a security agreement as a condition for the mine to, to, to restart, I think it's a good thing. And I believe that the president means well, and he would work with his various ministers of state to ensure that the, the mine is given the, the optimal security. No. Away from mining issues to our headline story tonight, National Health Insurance Authority has failed to pay pharmaceutical companies nine months of drug supply. Chief Executive Officer of the Pharmaceutical Chamber, Anthony Emeka, fears this singular act could collapse many companies. The World Health Organization says Ghana's markup on drugs could cause prices to go as much as three times higher. If you look at the... OPD attendance currently, uh, NHI covers almost 80 to 85 percent. And that was the reason why 
we reduce the prices of uh, medicines on NHI list by 30%, so that the ordinary person can benefit from that initiative. Legally, NHI is supposed to pay service providers uh, within three months after submission of their bills. The last payment that was made to service providers, providers was last year, uh, in some institutions last year, March, and in some institutions last year, April. This is adversely affecting the businesses of our members because we also have to go to bank, borrow money to be able to buy the product or to be able to manufacture all this product. Who pays for the interest? At the end of the day, look at the fluctuation also of the dollar. It's also affecting the businesses of our members. And frankly speaking, if the behavior of the NHI is not checked, some of their um, actions and inactions is adversely affecting members of the chamber. And as a result, some companies are also collapsing because of their behavior. And we think that government must have a look at that. Meanwhile, the pharmaceutical chamber in a bill to parliament is demanding the Food and Drugs Authority reduce its $22,000 charge for factory inspections, though the price of drugs has reduced by 30% following the removal of the VAT on certain drugs. The trickle-down effect is slow in reaching the ordinary person. Odilia Ntiamwa has been engaging the CEO of the chamber, Anthony Mecca, once again. We've also identified the high costs or the high fees charged by the regulator, that's the Food and Drugs Authority. Currently, you pay $20,000 for five years for a factory inspection. Then you pay, in addition, $3,600 for the registration of the product for every three years. Whilst our neighboring country in Nigeria pays uh, $750 for five years. Uh, fortunately, we've had a very good cooperation with the Food and Drugs Authority, and we've agreed to review, we've agreed to review the uh, fees charged by FDA. Currently, there's a bill uh, before Parliament for the review of the prices of medicines. We are doing this through the support of uh, Star Ghana. The proposed price is uh, we'll have $7,500 for the factory inspection fee, then $1,200 for um, product registration but it's for five years. But the subsequent review will be $1,000 for five years. All right, very interesting discussion there, but let's take a look at some of the fees and charges on drugs in Ghana here. In 200 drugs are registered in Ghana. Prices of drugs have reduced by 30% due to removal of the VAT and government taxes on drugs until 2018 was between 30 to 50 percent. The markup on drugs, according to the WHO, goes as high as 50 to 300 percent. And the Food and Drugs Authority charges $22,000 as factory inspection for a drug registration, while Nigeria's charges is only um, $750. Drug registration in Ghana is $3,600, while the same registration at an ivory course is actually thousand two hundred dollars all right so that's how the pharmaceutical sector is looking but time now to check news elsewhere in our local route the GRA and the Ghana Shippers Authority fears the country could lose a significant chunk of its transit trade to Lomé, Abidjan and Cotonou if measures are not adopted to prevent diversion of transit goods before they reach their intended destinations and the various landlocked countries that use Ghanaian seaports. Available figures indicate that transit trade volumes for much of this decade have accounted for about 6% of the country's cargo throughput. 
14 out of the 16 companies that apply to explore oil blocks put on offer by the government have qualified for the next stage of the bidding process. According to the Ministry of Energy, the 14 companies will now have up until May 21, 2019 to submit their bids for three out of the five available oil blocks. In the bid to lessen the demand for sovereign guarantees by international institutional investors who seek to make investments in Ghana, government is in the process of becoming a member of the Africa Trade Investment Agency. Okay, so that's all for business for now. But when I come back, we are going to look at the impact of the cleanup in the banking sector on the, um, the uh, savings and loan sector and also what's trending on social media. I'll be back in just about 30 minutes.